Hello, in this video I would like to do a video response on an article published on the winbeta.org website titled Windows 10, the tablet experience is better than ever, with video between brackets, with as a subtitle, you thought the Windows 8.1 tablet experience was good, you ain't seen nothing yet, in which the author writes and talks extensively uh, through a screencast uh, about why Windows 10 is undisputably better than Windows 8.1 on a Windows tablet device. Um, I liked this article and video when I saw and read them because uh, in my opinion it finally opens up further the discussion on the tablet experience of Windows in general and I think it's something that has not come to light uh, or been in conversations enough as of late. Um, I think Microsoft has lately concentrated mainly on the desktop side of the development of Windows 10, uh, but not enough on Windows uh, 10 tablet mode experience. Um, and um, with that, the author boldly claims that Windows 10, uh, even though is better, uh, but I disagree. And uh, that sparked my interest, uh, therefore, to do a response video in response to his article and video on this subject. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started, because the author discussed many points and I want to try and get it done in a, a shortest possible time frame. In front of you, you have two tablets, Windows tablet devices. Oh, uh, they're both Surface Pro first generation devices where the one on the right is running Windows 8.1 and the one on the left is running Windows 10 Technical Preview version 10162 at the time of recording of this video. So where do I want to start with? I want to start with multitasking uh, because the author claims that the multitasking is better and quicker than a Windows 8.1 but I disagree uh, because when you do the multitasking and thus the uh, apps, quick app switching and uh, app snapping. Uh, this is how it happens on Windows 8.1 and with Windows 10 you can do almost the same and speed wise I don't think there's much difference between both. They're both snappy, quick and are generally a good experience. So there's nothing new there. Even when I change the size of the uh, of the apps, the experience is generally snappy and quick on both devices. Um, when it comes to changing apps uh, with snapping, it's a bit different. With Windows 10, you do a single swipe. Um, no, let me try it again. This is uh, incorrect. Back to full screen. There we go. In Windows 8, you can do it by um, by dragging the app and snapping it in place. And in Windows 10, what you can do is press on an app, but then unfortunately, it has to you have to re uh, snap the apps to get back the. Uh, the right snapping uh, mode, like this. So that's uh, a slight drawback to uh, Windows 10 compared to Windows 8. Um, but you can do generally the same. So if I both close an app here and open this one and I swipe down and I drag within this, the same, just about the same time frame, another app, you get this the same uh, uh, the same uh, effect. So I don't see much much difference uh, in that. The only uh, added benefit of Windows 8.1, I think, which Windows 10 does not have, is that um, you can, uh, you saw on Windows 10 that if you want to open a new app, you first have to resize it to snap and then add the other app or close the app, which is unfortunate. But with Windows 8, you don't have to close any apps in the background, but you can simply by dragging put it in one of two frames and then it's done. 
there's no closing of the apps by swiping down. So in that sense, Windows 8.1 is still the better experience because it has more options and I think it's more tablet friendly uh, because it's not too hard to learn the gestures and Windows 10 is more mechanical where you have to swipe once and do a second action which is to open uh, another app which you have to then resize and then rescale everything. So maybe something to take into consideration. Then um, I want to discuss, um, let's see, the the taskbar. Um, in Windows 8, uh, you don't have a taskbar, you just have a clean interface, which I like because with tablets, in the long run, what you want is a clean distraction-free uh, use case scenario where you, you only concentrate on a few things, in this case, the live tiles and the apps. And anything around it is, in my opinion and experience, distracting. Uh, if I want something extra, like the power key and the search key, um, I consider them advanced system functions and the best place for them to be is in the charms bar that you can access with a single swipe. It's not difficult to learn and not difficult to remember. It's just like remembering where you left your car keys in the house. And as an added bonus, you get the time day and date with the most relevant status of the internet connection and the battery status on a platter on a floating uh, window. Whereas with Windows 10, I am greeted by a start menu, but also I have to take into account all these small teeny tiny buttons, which are hard to press. I really have to concentrate to press, not be uh, less precise which in the long run will be a, a jarring experience. Um, and if I want to see the, uh, the time, I can greet it with just a teeny tiny clock and a teeny tiny date bar. I can make it bigger, but then relatively the, the day and the date is smaller than the time itself compared to, uh, to Windows 8, as you can, uh, as you can see. Uh, and all this, Calendar dates is distracting because it's extra information I did not ask for. And I, if I want to ask it, uh, ask for uh, the calendar, I can always ask uh, enter into the calendar app uh, provided um, by Microsoft uh, within the app selection. Um, so that's the taskbar. When it comes to app switching, I want to add one more thing. The author claims that it's that having the, 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 the app tiles on the taskbar as a superior experience for tablet experience is not something I'm convinced because one, the buttons are quite small, two, the icons are difficult to see, and three, they're not provide, they don't provide um, a text label as well. So if you're not familiar with a new app, you might get confused which app you have to press while uh, with Things like the live tiles themselves, they, most apps have a title, uh, I mean um, a, a text label, and even when you go into the app switcher, most open apps in the background are provided with a title. So that's a better and superior experience than having these small icons here, and honestly, I never use them. And if, for example, I want to get to the food and drink app, it's so close to each other, the live tile and the app, I'm, it's almost irrelevant and, incons and, and unuseful uh, useful to use this in instead of being able to press a bigger button like, uh, like that. Uh, so that's what I have to say about the, the task uh, bar. Let's see what we have left. Um, we've discussed the ham, we've discussed the snapping, I'll skip the hamburger menu for now, maybe for a next video, video future discussion, I'll also skip the closing apps because that's uh, a small feature. Um, we've discussed the taskbar and the navigation. Um, one thing I do like about the taskbar is the back button. I do uh, sometimes feel that I miss the back button in Windows 8, so that's a good thing. With regard to search, I don't really mind either. Uh, both are convenient enough for quick access, but if I had to choose, I would choose uh, the Windows 8 version because you have all the, what I call, advanced system functions 
together while here you have the uh, the search in one place you have the uh, power key in another place and then you have to go to, to the action center for the internet connection and then you have to go uh, to the taskbar again for audio and for battery so it's all a bit jarbled and confusing while in Windows 8 everything is just all neatly ordered in the uh, in the charms bar okay what have we uh, left I've got left excuse my Dutch pronunciations and grammar use uh, let's see the start screen oh yeah the author claims that uh, the vertical scrolling of live tiles is a better experience than Windows 8.1. My experience is they both are as good as bad as they are. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I think it's a discussion of semantics, but uh, the arguments put forth to me don't sound really valid as to claiming that that is a better Windows 10 experience, uh, a tablet experience in general. What I do want to show is that when I scroll horizontally, you can see my thumb is almost static, uh, which I would presume is ergonomically perhaps a better gesture to use compared with two hands using my thumb to scroll vertically. You can see I'm using all my joints from the bottom, the middle to the top joint of my thumb. But if I use with one finger, uh, indeed, as the author implied, uh, this feels more ergonomically sound to me, while in Windows 8, when I scroll, I feel I, I'm actually using this joint to move my finger to accompany the, the, the gesture, so I think this is less ergonomic. But what I would prefer is not to choose one of either but to choose a combination of uh, of both yeah, that's interesting uh, what i want to show you was that um, uh, that in portrait mode um, um, ah, it's a pity it doesn't work so what i'll do is i'll cut out the video and then add a section after this so i'll be right back okay and we're back. So what I want left off with was the uh, uh, was the scrolling experience on both devices. So to continue further, I want to switch both tablets to portrait mode. And what I want to show here, if I change the aspect a little bit, is what I find the drawback is when you're in this mode you have to scroll quite a lot through many live tiles to get to the end or to the bottom of uh, a live tile list. What I would suggest is that Microsoft would just cut off uh, scrolling at a certain point and just transpose the remaining uh, live tiles to the side and that you can do a small uh, scrolling to horizontally to the right and then go down and that way increase efficiency and uh, speed of getting to the bottom of a list. Uh, so maybe that would be a better experience of uh, tablet use scrolling in the future, going forward with Windows 10, but also Windows 8. Um, and lastly, um, I would like to show the reading mode, which is a relevant part of the tablet experience. So I'll open uh, the article again. My experience is that the browser on Windows 8 is better than the browser, the new browser on Windows 10, simply because when you are using uh, a tablet to read an article, you want a distraction free. You want the article and you don't want any system icons um, available during the reading process. Out of sight is out of mind and only if you want it, you can uh, uh, call for the advanced system functions um, to change a setting on your tablet device. And that way I enjoy a full screen, uh, distraction free reading experience on the browser of Windows 8. It's completely full screen, while with Windows 10 you always still have the um, title bar with address bar and tabs. But interestingly, I do like 
the reading experience on Windows 10 because it's a natural document type orientation while with Windows 8 you have this strange horizontal screening of reading. Um, and if I can go back to the article for a second, there we go. Um, but then the interesting thing when you go back to portrait mode, which is the ideal reading mode on a tablet device, um, and go to reading mode, of course, there we go, and there we go, and back again, you can see that the browser on Windows 8 has a more full screen immersive reading experience compared to Windows 10 because you can read more text. Um, and um, 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 you don't feel like you're reading from a browser, which you do get when you look at the browser on Windows 10 because you have the, the bar at the, at the top. So I think that's something to take to consideration with developing a good tablet experience for Windows 10 in the future. Okay, um, I think that's about it for now. It's been quite a long video. I try to, I want to try and stay well below the time of the video of the author, but it's become just as long. Um, I'm curious what the author thinks about my response. I'd certainly like to hear, hear his views uh, on this matter and hopefully uh, spark a new conversation. And I also like to hear from the commenters and other re readers what they think about this response video. And perhaps I can use those responses and questions to perhaps make a further video to get into more uh, refined discussion of uh, the tablet experience of Windows 10 going forward. I thank you. Bye-bye.